Okay, let's talk about the offside law. The offside law is the most complicated, controversial, and misunderstood rule in soccer. So to begin with, let's talk about why we even have the offside law. The primary reason the offside law exists is to prevent cherry picking. And cherry picking, for example, if the pepper team was defending this goal and the salt team left a forward way up high there just looking for chances to score somewhat easy goals, uh, this player would be said to be cherry picking. Uh, so the offside law is put in place to prevent this situation. If there was no offside law, the game would probably look a lot more like this. What you'd have is some of your salt attackers hanging up by that goal, some defenders down there. At the other end of the field, you'd have a similar situation. Um, some pepper attackers, some salt defenders, and in the middle, you'd have a group of players just trying to get the ball from one end of the field to the other. Um, so the game would be very, very spread out. What the offside law does is it forces these players to stay somewhat connected. So the field starts to look more like this. And you see that these players are much more connected. There's a lot less space on the field. So that, what that means is that wherever the ball is, there's going to be pressure on the ball fairly quickly. Uh, this keeps the game moving faster and it puts a higher technical demand on the players. So that is the purpose of the offside law. Law 11 of Soccer's Laws of the Game uh, states that a player is in an offside position if he is nearer to his opponent's goal line than both the ball and the second to last opponent at the moment the ball is played. What that simply means is that there must be at least two opponents between the attacker and the goal at the moment the ball is played. Now typically, one of those two players is going to be the goalkeeper. So what we're going to talk about is the goalkeeper and then also the deepest defender. Now this attacker is allowed to stand in an offside position. There's no rule against that. But at the moment the ball is played, this attacker must be either even with or in front of the deepest defender to be considered onside. So if at the moment the ball is played, this is the positioning of the attacker and the defender, the attacker is onside. Even if this defender drops out and becomes the deepest defender, again, because this attacker is in front of or even with that deepest defender, the attacker is onside. That also would apply if, say it was one of these defenders who was set back. Even though she's not really involved with that attacker, because she is sitting so deep, she is putting this attacker in an onside position. However, if at the moment the ball is played, and that's the key, the moment the ball is played, if this attacker is deeper than the deepest defenders, this attacker is offside, and the defending team, the pepper team here, would be awarded an indirect free kick. Where this gets confusing for spectators and even coaches is that most of the time we're looking at the ball because that's where the action is. That's why it's important that we understand the job of the assistant referee. The assistant referee will always stand in line with the deepest defender. So let's say this defender is playing slightly deeper than her defending partners. The AR is going to stay right in line with that deepest defender. When the ball is played, the AR has to judge where the attacker is in relation to the deepest defender at the very instant the ball was played. And oftentimes this happens very quickly and these two pieces are 20, 30, 40 yards apart and that's what makes it such a difficult call. That's why so often as spectators we watch what happens over here and then we see what develops over here and then we think, hey, that play was onside or offside. But in reality we can't be sure because we were watching the ball. And that's why it's so important for the AR to stay in line with that deepest defender. There are a few notable exceptions to the offside rule. The first of which is you cannot be offside in your own half of the field. So let's say the white attacker is standing up here near midfield. All the pepper defenders are in front of her. Um, and this player passes her the ball. 
right? She is considered to be in an onside position because she's in her own half of the field. Also, if this player happened to pass the ball through there and she ran onto it, again, she is onside because she started in her own half of the field and you cannot be offside in your own half. Some other notable exceptions to the offside rule, you cannot be offside on a goal kick, a corner kick, or a throw in. So for example, let's say the, the assault team is about to take a goal kick from here and this player stands here and, and the, the line of pepper defenders held at midfield and this goalkeeper happened to kick the ball all the way here, this player is considered onside. However, if that player started there and let's say the goalkeeper kicked the ball and this player headed it on to her, now that player is offside. As soon as another player touches the ball, that puts her in an offside position. What's much more common, particularly at the youth level, is players who are in an offside position on throw-ins. So for, say, for example, the ball goes out of bounds and this salt player picks it right up and, and this player runs down there and none of these pepper players are paying attention and we throw the ball into this player, she is onside. All right, there is no offside on a throw-in. I'm going to give you one more notable exception and it has to do with whether or not a player in an offside position actually interferes with play. Now remember we said a player is allowed to stand in an offside position. So let's say this player, is just, just to make it very obvious, we got this attacker standing way in an offside position. Now, if this player passes the ball, certainly she is offside. But let's say we add another attacker in here and this player passes the ball through here, this player runs onto it. This play is actually onside because this player has not interfered with play. Okay, so here's another situation you'll run into somewhere along the line. Here we have an attacker who's about to shoot, and she has a teammate who is in an offside position. Now let's say this attacker just shoots directly and scores. So she hits the ball, it goes in the goal. That's a goal because the teammate in an offside position did not interfere with play. However, let's say that when the shot was taken, this attacker was close enough to the goalkeeper to interfere with maybe her, her vision of the shot or her ability to, to play the shot. All right, at that point, yes, she would be offside even if she didn't touch the ball. Also, let's say she was standing in this offside position and this player hits that same shot she hit earlier, but now there's a rebound and the rebound happens to bounce out to her. She would be considered offside because she gained an advantage from standing in an offside position before the shot was taken. So you'll hear a lot of people say you can't be offside on a shot and to an extent that's true, but as soon as that player in the offside position interferes with play, it is a violation and the offside foul will be called. The most typical offside violation is something like this. At the moment the ball is played, this attacker is behind this line of defenders. Ball gets played, the AR raises his flag, the pepper team is awarded an indirect free kick. In this clip, the player in advance of the ball is clearly offside, or at least you would think so at first glance. But let's take another look. As we freeze the action, we see that when the ball leaves the player's foot, the forward is just barely behind the deepest defender. This call was a lot closer than it appeared. Here, take a look at the central defender as she steps forward to put the opposing attackers in an offside position. This defender has just caught the opponent in an offside trap. But were both attackers actually offside? Let's look at it again with some help from the freeze frame. As the ball comes off the foot of the midfielder, the lower of the two forwards appears to be even with the defender. That would put her on side. Although a moment later she appears to be clearly offside, we can see why this is such a difficult call for the assistant referee.